Yeah, I think you got the hang of the boost there. So here we're looking at uh, Dragon's Fire. And so we have a Fire Dragon and an Ice Dragon that are on opposite end ends of the track. And as you can imagine, one's going to be breathing down fire and the other one's going to be breathing down ice. And the neat thing about every lap here is that it's going to change and intensify. Super colorful. And uh, the changes in the track keep it super interesting as well. I can do this. Now Shark Tank has really interesting capabilities. Uh, as a primary weapon, he'll shoot out little sharks. Please, now those no will be more. kind of lobbing projectiles, but super long range as well, high damage, low frequency. Now his secondary attack is really interesting too. He's gonna dive like Terrafin dives. So triangle button will do that for you. And when you do that, that's a great way to break lock. So when your opponents are targeting you from behind, just take a quick dive. And um, at Gamescom, this is the first time we've seen Terrafin's vehicle, I think. That's right. So uh, we're showing the gameplay for uh, Shark Tank uh, for the first time at Gamescom. And we've got his his toy little tank vehicle as well, which looks great. I know my kids are looking forward to playing with these on the carpet as much as in the game, I think. Yeah, you know, and when we look at uh, something like Shark Tank, and it's very much a powerful vehicle, but this one is also highly maneuverable as well. And so it's a, in one way, it's like it's a really cool kind of tank-like vehicle but it's unlike any other tank that you've experienced. And so that's uh, what really makes uh, every one of these designs really neat. So I think lots of surprises in there for uh, for the users. And it seems like on the X button, we've got a drift, is that right? Yeah, so on the land racing, we use drift uh, on the X button. In the air racing, that's a barrel roll or a banking uh, movement. In the sea racing, it's a dive uh, and a breach. Uh, and in the land, when you use the drift and you uh, press and hold it, it increases the level of boost that you build up. So it allows you to do tight cornering. And also, if you hold it long enough, gives you additional boost. OK, let's try that on this coming corner, see if I can get it right. Get a nice tight corner, if I can keep going. <laughs> Getting a bit battered. Well, so the fun, th fun thing about the race is like it's always in play until the third, almost like the second half of the third lap. So the gameplay systems that we have in here keep it interesting, even if someone is significantly ahead, there are ways of flipping you, flipping it in your favor. So does it favor the person behind? Does it actually do some rubber banding in terms of helping catch up? Well, actually the way we do that is in the bonus boxes, you're more apt, if you're behind, you're more apt to get boosts that are gonna enhance your speed or slow down your opponents. So for example, the speaky tiki there that you see on the screen on, on uh, Vroom Dude, uh, that's uh, something that's gonna slow the opponent down as well as attack the opponent. You have other ones like uh, the uh, hourglass that slows down everybody else too. There are other ones like rocket ram that are going to speed you up or the uh, gramophone that are going to give you kind of an attack boost as well as speed you up. And so those things when you're behind, they're going to close the distance. When you're ahead, it's going to be the sky shield uh, or the healing elixir or something like that. And that's going to give you additional protection from being attacked. But there's no, the actual speed of the vehicles isn't adjusted depending on your position. No, we don't actually interfere with the actual innate capabilities of the vehicle based on the position. We just want to either give you a leg up or uh, actually in every case we try to give you a leg up but in a different way. So for people behind it's about closing distance, for people ahead it's about uh, having some thoughtful defensiveness. Yeah, I like that because I think there's a temptation in some of these games to let the trailing car go faster. Um, and actually, my sons don't like that. They like to have a focus on the racing as well as the combat, and I think that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it, it's got to be very much a game of skill as much as anything else. It needs to reward players that have played, have upgraded their characters, have invested in those sorts of things, but at the same time, keep it interesting. So we try to do that by plussing up the benefits, but making the benefits slightly different for the guys behind versus the guys ahead. But they're both benefits. Looks like you got the hourglass hex. Yeah. <laughs> so what does that do to me? Slow it's going to slow you down. Slow you down. Yeah. So could you just go through the different um, weapons again? It sounds like there's quite a lot. Are they different depending on whether you're air, land, or sea? Uh, the actual uh, bonuses that come out of the boxes are unified across the races, so you can learn them and master them uh, and that kind of thing. Of course, the weapons for every vehicle are different based on the vehicle. Sounds good. Again, that's another 
race in the bag. I'm getting a bit better. <laughs> it's getting there. Getting there. I got the hang of the start. I like that. You can actually see where to press it. Exactly. So you've got an actual sort of a target to hit. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. great. Thanks. Thanks a lot. So another nice look at Skylander Superchargers online racing. Mm-hmm.